Hey everyone and welcome to another Nielsen Networking video. In the video ahead, we're going to kind of have a two-part video, if you will, within one video. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go out, download and install VirtualBox. Now VirtualBox is an open source, free to use virtualization platform from Oracle. Now once we have that set up and configured and we're happy with it, we are then going to go out and download and install as a virtual machine inside VirtualBox, Linux Mint. So that's kind of the, the, the big goal here is to get Linux Mint running inside of VirtualBox. So enough said, let's just get to the video. All right, first thing, go ahead, open your favorite web browser, head out to virtualbox.org. And you're gonna go ahead and click on the button in the middle of the screen here. Pick the option that matches your host operating system, meaning I'm on Windows right now, I'm gonna download the Windows one. If you're on a Mac, you'd want a Mac version. If you're on Linux, you'd wanna go in here and pick whatever distribution of Linux you are on. Straightforward enough, right? Uh, and then the next one we're going to want to do is we're going to want to head over to linuxmint.com. I believe that's the URL. It is. And what you're going to want to do when you get here is you're going to want to hit download. Uh, and then you're going to want to pick the edition. I recommend going with the cinnamon edition. That's the most polished. Um, and uh, it's just the most user friendly. It has the most uh, features in it. And I, I don't know if this is mate or matte um, edition. This is kind of the more stable, robust, traditional and then there's the XFCE edition, which is light, simple, and so what I've heard is it's the quickest edition. But again, I'm going to go with the Cinnamon because it's closest to like a real Ubuntu kind of desktop experience. So we can kind of compare at some point how, how it feels versus that. So I'm going to go ahead and go here, and you're going to get some options um, of different mirrors. The quickest one I have found is going to be right here. And I don't know if it's GigiNet or GigNet or whatever it is, but that's the quickest one I found. And it says it usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do it. I'm on the East Coast, so it may be better for you, but um, I'm going to let that go. And we'll go ahead and get our uh, VirtualBox install going. Okay, so what we want to do is go right-click, run as admin. It takes a couple seconds here to pop up. And then it's a pretty straightforward installation. First screen here, we're just going to go ahead and hit next. Nothing to see here. It's just welcoming you to their software. This screen, you're going to want to go ahead and leave the default options up here. But you may want to change where you're going to locate the actual hypervisor, which is the um, VirtualBox software. Um, you may want to move this off your operating system. If you're on Windows, you know, move it off the C drive. You know, just some people do that just best practice. You don't want to really have other software running on your um your main operating system drive. So if you wanted to do it, now would be the time to do it. We're gonna hit next. This is just warning you that you may experience a like a quick blip, if you will, of your uh, network connection to the internet. Nothing to worry about, just hit yes. Um, and then th this is just telling you it's gonna go out and download some dependencies for you that you are missing. Python core and uh, Win32 API. Uh, most people probably aren't going to have this and so it's fine to go out and download if you do happen to have this i would highly recommend that you make sure by downloading the version they're recommending it's not going to break whatever was depending on the older version of it you know what i mean you don't want to cause um you don't want to get virtual box up running only to blow something else up so just an fyi that was my warning uh so go ahead and hit yes if you're good with that and then hit install to install and it takes about you know, 30 seconds or less, probably not even that to get this installed. And there we go. And once it's done, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that down. Looks like our, our mint download is about halfway. So while that's doing it, we can go ahead and do one thing that we're going to want to set up for our networking in um, VirtualBox. And that's going to be right here. You're going to want to click on network and we're going to want to go to NAT networks and we're going to hit create. And then you're going to go ahead and you can either double click on it or you could click properties. Double click is, I, I just prefer that. And you can either rename this if you want or you could just leave it. Uh, I'm just going to change it to NN network. Um, but again, you could put whatever you wanted there. IPv4 prefix, that's going to be your subnet range for your network. So I'm going to leave it on the default. These, This is one of the standard private reserved um, IP address ranges. I'm also going to leave DHCP enabled. I will likely set my virtual machines that I install to have a static IP, but this won't interfere with that um, because the DHCP that it actually installs is smart enough to ping to see if that lease is already taken and it will assign it another IP address. Um, so that's what I would suggest, but if you don't want DHCP, by all means, turn it off there. I would also not recommend turning on um, 
IPv6 unless you really need it, which most of us probably don't. But um, again, do whatever you need to do. And when you're done, hit apply. And now we're good. And once our install uh, or our download gets done, we can begin our install. Okay, and it looks like the uh, download is done for the uh, Linux Mint ISO. So this would officially uh, begin part two of our video where we're gonna now go into VirtualBox and create a Linux Mint virtual machine. So to do that, we need to open up VirtualBox, obviously. And if you're still in the networking section, you'll just wanna flip out of it and go to Welcome here. So you get this uh, menu here and you wanna select a new and name this whatever you want. I'm not very creative, so I'm just gonna do Linux Mint Virtual Machine. Uh, folder, this is the location of your actual virtual machine and any supporting files. So the, the, why this is important to note is if you put this on a volume, remember if you make a 100 gig virtual machine hard drive for our Linux Mint install, it's gonna take it on that volume. So if you're low on space on a specific volume, I suggest you point this virtual machine folder to a different volume with extra space if you need it, if you have that option. The ISO image is gonna be the download. So you'll wanna go ahead wherever you downloaded it, select it, hit okay. And this is important, you wanna say skip unattended installation. Otherwise it will try to install it using some defaults and we just don't want it to do that. Here, you're gonna go ahead and bump it up to two CPUs if you have it. It, it can limp along with one, but I would highly recommend if you have the capacity, go to two. Two gigs is fine. If you wanted, you could bump this up a little bit. It would make things a little smoother. If you are doing this in a production environment instead of a lab like I'm doing it, um, you might even want to go to like eight gigs if you had the room, especially if you're going to do any kind of, you know, graphic in intense things like that. But you can always, the cool thing about doing this with a virtual machine, you can always go back and bump it up later. Um, so I'm just going to start minimal and I can always bump it up if I can instead of going the opposite and uh, instead of over committing resources I'd rather go low and be able to expand in the future same principle with the hard drive I'm gonna actually bump this down to 15 gigs it should only take about 10 to install based on what I'm doing now if you wanted to go ahead and add extra applications and things to this you could you could um, allocate more but again you can always expand this later second thing to know here on this page do not click pre-allocate full size if you do it's going to pre-allocate the full size of whatever you selected here meaning if you had put 100 gigs as your maximum you wanted it it's not going to say i will stretch to 100 gigs it's going to allocate 100 gigs and whether you use 10 or 100 it's going to take 100 gigs so again start small with future um, expandability in mind um, and then once you're done there, you don't need to do anything here. Just hit next. This is just an overview of all the virtual hardware. You're going to go ahead and hit finish. And now you can see we have a virtual machine here. Okay, let's start it up. We're going to double click it. And here we go. We're going to want to select the default option. So just hit enter. And it's going to load our install desktop, I guess you could call it. You'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, and what we're going to want to do at this point is just double click the install Linux Mint CD icon and wait for it to pop up. Okay, first screen is language selection. If you wanted to read the release notes, you could. I don't. Next screen is going to be the keyboard layout. Again, pick whatever you need to. All right, here it's asking you if you want to install these multimedia codecs. I'm going to go ahead and install them. They, they just give some compatibility to certain um, formats of video. Uh, audio, and um, I almost think it should just be a default, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. It doesn't take up much space. Next screen is just warning you that it is going to erase anything on the hard disk. Obviously, we're in a, on a virtual machine here. There is nothing on the hard disk because we just created it, so we don't have any um, issue. So we're going to go ahead and click install, and it's going to set up the partition tables. It's just letting you know these are what's going to be set up and formatted. No big deal. We don't have anything on those. I mean, I guess if you were doing this in a production environment, make sure you're not doing this on a hard drive that you actually had another operating system or any files for that matter that you cared about. Time zone, your name, I'm just gonna do, you could do whatever you want. This is gonna be, it says your computer name, this means your host name. So it needs to be no spaces and no hyphens or special characters. Um, I guess you can use hyphens, you can't use underscores. It has to be DNS friendly. So I'm just gonna put, I'll stick with my creativity. Username, go ahead and pick your username and then your password. And it doesn't like my password because it's only nine characters, but 
you know, that's okay. Uh, hopefully you would do better if you were putting this in actual production. And let's go ahead and make sure we leave it on require my password to log in. That way it doesn't automatically log in. Okay, and now it's at the actual install part. This will take, I think about 10 minutes. So um, I'll go ahead and pause the video and come back to you when it's done. Okay, installation finished. And we're gonna go ahead and restart now. And at this point, you can just go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna reboot. I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. Okay. And you can go ahead and just close out of this. And I'm, well, I'm gonna actually make sure this is checked too. Um, or unchecked, I'm sorry. Show this dialogue at startup. I don't need to see this every, every time I boost. And then as you can see, this is kind of small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this and then I'm gonna type in display. And I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can kind of see. And I guess what we're gonna to have to do to actually hit apply is we're gonna probably have to reduce this down here, scroll down and hit apply. There we go, we're gonna keep it new. All right, that gives us a little more real estate. You could make it as big as or as small as you wanted, um, but that gets us started here. Next thing we wanna do is go up here again and we're just gonna type in updates. We wanna to go to the update manager and we want to hit OK here, and this is going to process some updates for us. We're going to want to apply the update here, and it's going to ask you for your password. And it's downloaded, so you can see we definitely have connectivity. No need to go out and run any ping test or anything like that. It's going to download a new um, update manager update, and then it's going to download all the updates available. And this can take quite a while, so I'm going to pause the video while this goes on. But what you would want to do is hit Install Updates. Uh, you don't need to have a, a local mirror unless you're having really bad performance. So you could just hit no to that blue um, bar there. Hit install updates and then hit OK. It's just warning you what's going to be installed. And put the password and hit authenticate. And then it's going to go ahead and start right here. You could click this if you wanted to see it. I'm going to let us do its thing and I will come back to you when it's done. Okay, it looks like it finished, so we're going to go ahead and reboot. And we'll come back when it's done. Okay. We'll check and make sure all there's no more available updates. And as you can see, we're up to date. So we're going to go ahead and check the drivers. See if there's any updates up there. Looks like we're good on drivers. Okay, the only other things you may want to do, especially if this is going to be like your actual device you're going to use, it's going to be in production, production environment as it's called. Um, you may want to enable snapshot technology using time shift. I'm not gonna go actually and do this because I did not create a big enough hard drive for this. But what you would wanna do is go into the wizard and I I would go to the rsync, next. It will estimate the size. This should usually mirror almost what exactly what your installation size is. Because what it will do is it, it takes a copy of your system as it is right now. And then any changes, it creates like a a restore point, if you will. So if at any point you go past that and you decide, oh no, I really screwed up, I need to get back to where I was, you can just click it and it will restore back. So it's gonna take up equal to what your drive is currently, plus any um, incremental changes you make in the future. So you would wanna hit next here, and these are those restore points. So you could actually say, okay, I want daily, you know, I wanna keep seven daily restore points. Uh, meaning once a day, it will take a backup. So you could go seven days back, if you will. And then you could do one, or three weekly, whatever it's set to. And that would take one snapshot a week, every week. So then you could go back three weeks. So you can kind of see how that, that plays in. I'm not gonna do any of this because like I said, I don't have the space and I'm in a lab, but that's how that would work for you. Um, it's something I would advise doing if this was a device you were gonna be using daily. Um, the last thing you might wanna do would be looking into enabling the firewall or, and or customizing you know, your startup sounds, um, downloaded some new applications if you wanted them. There are a ton of them out there. This is a pretty big distribution um, and things like that. So anyways, we've reached our goal. We have Linux Mint, Mint installed. We're gonna go ahead and shut it down. Um, and I think we've, we've done everything we, we went out to do. So if you've enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate a, a like would be awesome. 
or better yet, subscribe to the channel so you can see our future content. Um, and that's about that. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, you go out and have a great day. Thank you.